Hey everybody, it's Brad with another Floriani Total Control U video for you today. Uh, and today we are going to uh, first make sure that you have the latest version of the software before we go uh, and start with the project that we're making today. Uh, they came out with a new update finally after like over a year uh, we've been waiting for an update to come out. So go to uh, download software. When you open your program in your My Floriani today, you can just click right here on download software. That's going to give you a shortcut to the download for the latest version. Um, and so you're going to just run the file that this downloads. Um, you want to make sure that you have Floriani closed before you run the file though. Uh, so um, it, uh, it doesn't want you to be have Floriani open while you're updating it. Um, and then once you have updated um, if you want to see the exhaustive list of all of the changes, um, you're going to want to sign in uh, to the RNK Software Club and then go to, uh, let's see, go to Home and then click on Total Control U where you can see what's new with the current build. If you click on the current build, what's new, that's going to show you all the videos that Trevor made to show you you know, the new things that are built in. I'm not gonna go over all of this stuff in this video. Uh, we're just gonna be doing a specific project, but um, Trevor shows uh, in detail how all this stuff works. And by the way, if you didn't know about these little videos that they give you for every version, um, they are super helpful. And if you go back to past builds video archive here, this has every single video, which there's like 100, like, gotta be at least 100 of these, probably more than that, uh, of videos that have been put out along with every version of the software that show you the new things that have been updated. Okay, so, you know, if there's if there's stuff, you know, I haven't been paying attention to these videos, they are very, very good, very useful uh, for learning what the, um, the new updates over the years have done. So, anyway, I am gonna close out of this and we are going to create a new design because one of the things that happened with this new update is it fixed the fact that uh, the program was not able to open paint in the auto digitizing wizard if you have Windows 11. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. Um, but for those with Windows 11, the way that I teach to use the auto digitizing and auto artwork wizards wasn't working for th the past year and a half. Okay, so now it works. <laughs> so so you want to make sure that you're into the, the latest update if you want to do this. Okay, so uh, last time, the last time I did a Total Control class, I was showing how to use artwork from the artwork library, okay, which when we bring in, it comes in and the, the outlines are already there. So we don't have to trace anything to draw a shape with our, uh, we don't have to trace anything to get shapes that we can turn into embroidery, right? So that was what I was showing is, is how to use these built-in designs from our vector art library that we can quickly and easily turn into embroidery designs, all right? So like, for instance, I could go in here and take it, tell it that I want to have that be a, um, oop, have that be a satin stitch outline like that, a steel stitch, we could have, these three be a fill stitch and we could have this white background be a fill stitch and there we go i've got a spooky ghost let me make it a different colored background so you can see it uh 3d spooky ghost right without having to draw anything so um you know i'm not you don't have to have followed along exactly with what i was doing there but the idea of what we did last time was working with artwork that's already been traced so we don't have to use the drawing tools to make our own shapes now what i want to show you today is a way to take a, an image and automatically trace it and automatically turn it into artwork but not have it automatically turn into stitches so that we get to choose what stitch goes where and that tool is in our auto digitizing wizards so in this wizards category with a little wizard hat you're going to click on this and a little flyout menu is going to come out all right and the one that we want one that i normally play with is this one auto digitizing and advanced auto digitizing but we're not going to play with those this time we want to end up with just artwork we want to end up with a file that's just the outlines that we can convert into stitches so what we're going to do is we're going to left click on this and choose select image and what will happen is by default it's going to be looking at this category of images that is built into the program okay and um the first thing that we should do is uh by default it's not going to be displaying these as pictures so i'm going to go in here and i'm going to click on this view menu 
I'm going to left click on that and I'm going to tell it to show me large icons. And that way we can see a picture of these designs. Now these are JPEG images, okay? So that means that these are just, they're made out of dots essentially. Um, they're, they don't have the outlines built into them, but they're all very simple images and they're good for learning how this works. Okay, so if I choose one of these, like if I choose the horsey here, right, and I say open, it's, uh, it's, it's now got the, the image that I selected here, and we're going to hit next. Here it shows me the image, and if I needed to crop it, I can. I'm not going to crop this one. Um, here I can set the size of it. So right now, this is uh, just under two inches wide, which is pretty small, but that's okay. We'll make a small little horsey. That's fine. And we'll hit next. And at this page, it shows me what colors it sees. And when we're working with artwork that is kind of purpose built for this sort of thing, like these are, you'll get like nice, clear, clean uh, divisions of color, right? But what we're going to do after we, we do this basic thing is we're going to start doing this from more challenging artwork, let's say. And we're going to have to use the editing uh, that's built into. Um, to Windows to edit these images. But this one, we don't actually need to do that uh, because this is nice and clear and clean. Um, and we're gonna hit next and we see that it has seen that the background color is white, right? It's told us right, right here, this is the background color. And it's already knows not to fill the background color area. Okay, if we check that, then this white would be thread, which we don't want that. And um, we're gonna hit finish. And there's our, there's our design. This is just like now, if I had imported it in using the artwork library, but instead we turned it from a JPEG, from a, from a picture like a type of picture we could download over the internet, into a design that's just outlines. Okay, now I know it looks like it's filled in, but that's just for our benefit. If we uncheck the fill here, we can see this is just outlines. That's what, that's what data is really there. The fill is there just for kind of us to be able to, to see it and select it more easily. So. What do we do with this? Well, we can look at each individual area, right? And we can decide what type of stitch belongs there by doing things like using my ruler tool here and measuring it. So let's see, this, if we measure this, it's gonna say, okay, I say that you should use a fill here, right? That's what the, the software is saying. So we can say, okay, we'll make that a fill. So we go down and we choose our standard fill. That's this big um, uh, purple star here. Okay, and then we go down and we measure another part of it. Say, okay, what about the hoof? Oh, that should be a satin stitch. Okay, so we go in and we select the hoof, right? And we hit the uh, auto satin tool and there it is. Okay, now notice that it did this as one piece. Okay, that's because the software didn't know, you know, it's looking at this and it's seeing that that and that are one one area of color, even though, you know, really we probably would want to have that be a separate hoof from that. Um, but it's not going to let me do that automatically, okay? But we, there's ways we can go in and monkey with that. But we'll leave that the way that it is for now. This one, uh, you know, we can measure it, and it'll tell us to do satin there, too. And the other one is the same size, so we can guess that that's going to tell us to do that, too. Um, and then uh, let's look at the forelock on the main here. Let's see what that says. Okay, it says to use a satin stitch. Now, I bet you that what it does when we auto satin this one, which, by the way, we're using the auto satin tool. I'm sorry, I didn't mention that. But this is the tool that we're using for satin. It's all of these are satin tools, but for our purposes here, we're gonna use the automatic satin tool, okay, which is the very last one on the end. But I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And when I use my auto satin, I imagine it's gonna split this into a few different uh, uh, columns of satin stitch. So let's see, go ahead and tell it auto satin. And we see how we've got kind of different stitch directions going in there. Right, so that kind of splits off from there. We can actually do this and tell it that we want it to do that over here. Uh, and we'll do that once we finish this one. Now, if we look at this, this one I'm sure it's going to tell us to do this as a fill if we measure it. But if we look at the way that it did here, right, it's probably going to do something similar if we tell it to make a satin stitch here. So let's see what happens. It did. So it made this a separate piece from this and from that. But at the same time, that kind of looks weird how, how fat this is. And it made a big weird jump here. Now, if you get us uh, an area that makes a big weird jump like that, sometimes you can get rid of it by adjusting the start and stop points, which in order to see where the, the, the designs or the, um, the stitches start and stop, you have to select the object 
and then go to the uh, the the uh, the shape tool, which is this is a shortcut to the shape tool here. And the start point is going to be a green dot, which in this case is here, and the stop point is going to be a red dot. So if we have it start here and stop there, what if instead of that we have it start and stop here, and then we get a jump stitch there? So what if I have it go here? We still get a jump stitch there. What if we have it start over here and then stop down here? That has gotten rid of that jump. So, so so sometimes, you know, when you see something that looks weird like that, you can kind of fix it by monkeying with your start and your stop points, right? So, oh no, I see we still have one going right there. Um, yeah. Well, I imagine that if we sat here and screwed with it for long enough, we could find a way that it didn't. Uh, but that, that isn't the focus of what we're doing here now. Uh, and then this one's going to be so big, it's definitely going to be a fill. Uh, and then the eye, we'll make that a satin. Okay, now let's see what we can do. And actually, we could say, well, what if we did this one as a satin too? Yeah, so that one gets all, all, all messed up. So we'll set leave that back as a fill. And we could, if we decide we just want this to be a fill, we can do that. It just looks more flat and boring as a fill stitch than it does as a satin stitch, I think. And we could probably monkey with this enough to get it to be perfect. Um, like, let's see. Have it start here and stop here. Okay. Yeah, so it really doesn't want to start down there. So here I think that that weird jump actually gets covered up by the satin stitch. And again, that's just me moving the start and stop around, uh, like experimenting to see what, what works to do that. Now, if I don't like the way that the, the hoof down here turned out, um, I, can, I can go in and monkey with this too if I want to. So uh, what we could do is we could split these into two separate shapes. And there's a few, there's a lot of different ways to do that. But um, I could go in here and... Um, use the shape tool and I could split this. Actually, you know what we'll do is before we do this, we're going to convert this back to, to artwork. So this, we're going to set this so that it is back to artwork with this yellow star here. And then we're going to split the shape along this line by right clicking, choosing split line and right clicking and choosing split line on these two, um, dots, which now splits this into two pieces, each of which can now be closed using the close shape tool. That kind of created a weird overlap doing it that way. But we could kind of monkey with the lines to get them so that they're not overlapped. Kind of twisted here. There's probably a simpler way to do that. But there we go. Now we've got two separate shapes, and each one can now be separately turned into a satin stitch, and they can look a little bit more separated that way. Okay, now we didn't have to do that. Uh, but anyway, the, the whole point here was not really like a digitizing lesson specifically on, on making this horse, really. It was just to show you that we can go from a, a JPEG image and get a vector image out of it. All right, so now that is something that's built into the program. That's something that is designed to work fairly well when you bring it in. So anything from this category is going to be brought in and, and work pretty easily. Like for instance, let's say that we wanted to have this, um, this football helmet, right? We go in and we pick the football helmet and we can be pretty reasonably sure that this is going to work correctly. Now here's a thing though. If do I want to have this be a white dot or do I want to have this be a hole? Uh, you know, you have to you have to choose whether you want it to be one or the other because here on the next page, if I don't fill the background color area, this is going to be empty space, right? And maybe we want that. Maybe we want that to be empty space in the design, but if you don't, you would have to edit the image, change your background color to be something other than white. Okay, that way it preserves the white on the inside. And then, um, oh. Sorry. Here, let me go back 
set it the way that it was. Uh, I didn't. Rem I forgot that my screen was going to be way bigger than the recording area. Um, but so we could go in and change the background color of it using uh, Paint here, which is just the program that automatically opens when you choose um, Edit. Change it to change the background color to something that's not in there. That's going to preserve the white that's in there. And then all you can do, all you have to do, is just simply close it and hit Save, and that brings it in. We hit Next. And here it sees that green is my background color. That's going to preserve my white spaces in there if I wanted them. And hit finish. And there we go. We got a nice, uh, uh, you know, football helmet shape here. Maybe we want to use this shape to uh, create uh, an applique, right? Here, I'm, I actually don't want these holes in there. I was just kind of showing you how how to do it. So I'm going to delete the white so that I just have the um, the, the helmet here. Now, if I tell this that I want it to be an applique really all I have to do is click the applique button here and boom now we have an applique of this guy maybe I want it to be uh, in my properties here I want it to be a blanket applique look at that and it automatically will flip around uh, my blanket stitch for the inside of it so um, so you know there's there's cool stuff that can that can be done um, with the built-in ones but they are kind of like guaranteed to work pretty well um, without having to do too much stuff um, so I was thinking about what kinds of things I could do um, with the auto artwork wizard and then I went out to dinner last night and the drinks menu uh, at the restaurant that I was at had this really cool artwork on it that was just very simple outlines and you'll see it because I took a photo of it and we're going to take a photograph and run it through the auto artwork wizard and create ourselves a embroidery design off of a photograph. Um, and, uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started doing that. All right, so I will, uh, put a link to this image, uh, in the details of this video, or if you're in the class, I'll put it on your USB drives for you. Uh, but so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the wizards and go to the, uh, auto artwork wizard. Okay. And then we're going to go to select image. And in my case, I have it in my downloads folder. So I'm just going to go to, uh, my downloads folder it's the most recent one okay so you just go ahead and open up uh and i'll name it like menu or something so it's not a bunch of numbers just straight off my phone i'm gonna hit next all right so this time we are going to crop it so what i want is this little the the picture of the wine bottle and the wine glass okay so we're going to crop out all of the rest of my image right so we don't need the bar top we don't need my hand we don't need the the rest of the dirty menu. And what I like about this is this menu is like dirty looking. It's gross. Like, <laughs> um, you know, the it's certainly not ideal clip art. Okay, that we're that we're going to be dealing with. Now, the other thing is the height. Now, remember, uh, an image that you take with your phone is massive. So if you're taking a picture of something, you're, it's going to be huge. So right now our width is 15 inches, our cropped area here. That's too big, 31 inches high. There isn't an embroidery machine in the world that can do that. Uh, and we don't need it to be that big. Now in real life, this image was, I would say, maybe eight inches tall overall. So um, if we really crop it down so that we're just on the design, okay, and we tell it that the height, uh, we'll call that seven inches. Or no, we'll call the, the highlighted area eight inches. All right, it'll automatically scale the width for us. Uh, and now we just hit next and look at what it's gonna see. It sees a bunch of colors, okay? All we need are two colors, okay? We need the color of the background and the color of the artwork. Now, one thing that we can try is we can try reducing the number of colors that it's allowed to see. So if we change this to two, and hit show preview, that's what it sees if we do that. But I feel like we lose some of the detail because it blends some of the yellow into the, the brown background. So I'm gonna undo that, right? I'm gonna reset, and we're just gonna bring this into the image editing program just the way that it is. I'm gonna hit edit image, okay? And I'm going to zoom out a little bit using this button here so that I can see the whole thing. Now, basically, Everything that is background, we want to be not there. So I'm going to use the fill bucket up here, and I'm going to choose white because that's just completely different than anything else in the design. So if I click white 
with the, the paint bucket here in the background, it's going to start filling in that area, right? And anything that I don't want to be part of my design, I can get rid of just by clicking on it. Okay, now that was pretty quick and simple to get rid of the vast majority of that. Now, down here underneath of this, I see a dark colored strip. I'm going to zoom in a little bit by just hitting this plus sign over here, and then I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to take a closer look. Is that supposed to be part of this? I don't think that it is. So I'm going to left click and get rid of that. And then what about this? Is this supposed to be there, part of the wine bottle, or is that uh, is that part of um, the background? Well, I can go back and look at the original image by um, opening it up on my computer. Oop, I didn't mean for it to be quite that big. We can see that, yeah, that's because of a reflection that this looks like this. Okay, so that is supposed to be there. So we're gonna go ahead and say, all right, we're gonna leave you. Now, we need to get all of these lines to all be one color though. So we're gonna pick a color. It doesn't matter what color we pick. Uh, as long as it's not white, uh, it's gonna work just fine. So if I want it to be one of these colors, I can use the eyedropper tool and pick that color. And then I can fill in everything that isn't that color very easily here. Now we're not gonna worry too much about this all being like a, like looks like it's got bites taken out of it. We're gonna fix all that once it draws my outline. Um, but we're gonna go in here and just make sure that we only have this shade of yellow for all of my lines so that it treats them all as one color change. And we should only have two colors when we get back into Floriani, okay? And that's going to be white and yellow. Okay, so if we're if we're satisfied that we did this, we just hit the close button up here and hit save. It's gonna automatically import it in. And what we should see is only two colors. One is white, two is gold. Okay, that's sweet, that's exactly what we wanted. We're gonna hit next. And then on this screen, it's gonna show us that it picked white as the background color. That means it's not going to have any white in there. It's just gonna have the yellow and we hit finish. And there we go. So there is my artwork that I took off of a menu from a restaurant that I was at last night. <laughs> okay, so we can now turn this into embroidery. But before we do, we should probably fix some of this weirdness along the lines here. Like right in there, that's all jaggedy and scraggly. We want to get rid of that um, as much as we can. So let's see what we can do about it. If we go in and we find that shape, uh, it looks like it's this one, number nine. We can look at the shape by using our shape tool and we see that there's a million billion uh, nodes that make up this shape. So before we start editing it, we wanna try and simplify this down so that there's not quite so many nodes to monkey with. And we can do that with an operation that's built into the program. We have it. So we have our, our artwork selected. We can right click, once the, once the cursor becomes a hand by moving it over the artwork, we're gonna right click and choose Simplify Smoothen, all right? And what that's going to do is it's going to get rid of some of those excess nodes. Just leave this at the defaults. Don't mess with these. Just say, okay. And now let's take a look at it again. Way fewer nodes. Okay. Way easier to deal with. All right. And we're going to zoom in. I'm scrolling with my mouse wheel. And we're going to get rid of some of these points that just don't need to be there. So we're going to right click that point and choose delete point. Right click this point and choose delete point. And right click this point and choose delete delete point and we're going to go through our entire shape oh if we lose it up here choose this and to fit we're going to go through our entire shape and look for any of those kind of weird lines I didn't mean to click off of my shape look for any of those kind of weird lines like right here this does not need to be here we're going to get rid of this point gone remember i right clicked it to do that Okay, and we'll do the same for all of these shapes. Anything that looks weird, we can simplify smoothen it. So this right here, we've got kind of a weird divot in it. We're gonna take that, and look at it. Yeah, that's too many points to monkey with. Right click, simplify smoothen, leave it at the default, say okay. And hey, that fixed itself. So that simplify smooth is very powerful when you're working with artwork that you are bringing into the program this way uh, because it just makes it so much easier to work with and it fixes many of the problems kind of automagically. 
All right, so now once we're here, we just need to pick what type of stitch this is going to be. And if we don't know, we can use our ruler to measure it and say, okay, that should be a satin stitch. Excellent. Well, let's go ahead and auto satin it. So I'm going to, every single piece of this should be a satin stitch. So I'm going to select the whole thing by doing all items here. And I'm just going to choose my auto satin and let's see what we get. Okay. Looks pretty good. I'm going to say two fit. And there we go. Now, one thing before I would take this and sew it out on my on my napkin, you know, I want to have a matching napkin for my menu at my restaurant. I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm going to add something called pull compensation to it. Uh, if we go over to our um, commands here, uh, this one right here that's got like a line running through a zigzag, that's pull push. You always want to do this for, for any any anything you save in this program. You're always going to want to do this. Select the whole thing, go to pull compensation type, set it to 0.4, and hit apply. That's going to fatten up all of our outlines uh, and um, and make it so that when you sew it out, it doesn't look too skinny. Uh, but yeah, there we go. So that is uh, that is some artwork that I took off of a menu that we then turned into <laughs> an embroidery design. So we didn't have to draw anything, and um, I think it did a pretty good job on this. So uh, yeah, that is the uh, the lesson for today. Um, for the rest of the class, I'm going to be talking about the 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 things that were added in the update. Um, so you know, if you're not able to attend my class in person, really just watch Trevor's videos. They're good, um, and they explain. Um, the, different, the new stuff. So I uh, hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.